So this is a little bit more of a risky video. Donald Trump or whoever the other person is, it's like, just so we're clear, I don't have any political affiliation. In fact, I really do not care. In fact, I'm curious as to how out of a country with billions of people, these are the two individuals that seem to have, to me, it's all a show. And I, I could care less about it. I'm a big fan of creating my own economy and I want to be good for whatever happens politically. Um, we're investors and entrepreneurs, so we make the best. We, we, we're, we're dealt our cards, and then we, we do our best with them. So personally, don't care who's elected. Selfishly, when we're looking at political and, and kind of financial policies, I think uh, entrepreneurs, investors typically sway more to the right because um, the, the, it, it's a little more friendly to actually capitalism. But either way, don't care. We're just going to talk about the elections and how they could influence crypto and DeFi and how to prepare with whatever happens. I swear to God, if I see a comment on someone's the best and everyone's an idiot, like it's just like it's so immature. Uh, we can have our opinions and I, I value those and, you know, whatever. But it's just like Buddhism is yeah. better than Christianity. It's just like you're an idiot. Stay open minded and let's um, let's explore as investors and for data. What moves can we make to make the best? No one's coming to save you. No politician's going to save you. Let's just be clear on that. So let's save ourselves and let's talk about it. Gordon, what do you got? Totally. Yeah. And I think, you know, no matter who gets into office, I think the price of Bitcoin is going up regardless with a lot of the stuff that's happening over the next 12 months. But markets do not like uncertainty. And, you know, we've had a little bit of a breakout for Bitcoin over the past few weeks, getting back up to this $67,000, $68,000 level. And we've managed to kind of break through this level of uh, this trend line and level of resistance that we had going all the way back to March when we got Bitcoin all the way up to $73,000. So my expectation, you know, we've only got a week or two to go until we have this November 5th election, but it's not going to surprise me if we kind of chop here for the next week or two as we approach that, because there's two key events happening, Lucas, the election that you alluded to and followed very swiftly by the next FOMC meeting two days later on November 7th. And, you know, people who were following the channel will know that there was a rate cut on September 18th. And we saw the price of Bitcoin surging after the rate cut that occurred in the middle of September. And as we approach the November 7th FOMC meeting, it's expected, you can see 97.6% probability right now, that we're going to get a further 25 basis point rate cut. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, again, if we jump back to the chart very briefly, we zoom back to September 17th, the day before we were about to get that initial rate cut, the um, the expectation was, was landing on September 17th that within 24 hours, we were going to get this rate cut. And the market started to price in that rate cut the day before. Mm -hmm. And the day that we got the rate cut on September 18th, we saw a surge in the price of Bitcoin going from you know the $59,000 level all the way up to $66,000 in the next 10 days. So again, that decision of the rate cut gave the market more clarity with regards to what was going to be happening in the economy. And we got a 10% price surge over the next 10 days. So again, as we move towards uh, November 5th and November 7th, I think you know that three-day period is going to be very important for uh, giving the markets more certainty on where the price action can move. Uh, we're even seeing assets. If we jump over to the Solana chart, we saw Solana breaking out above this level here at 162. We tested this three times on three different occasions before we eventually broke above 162. We're mm -hmm. pulling back a little bit today. But again, the next level of resistance is around 186. Mm -hmm. And I think the momentum that the confirmation of rate cuts on November 7th, along with, you know, the presidential election results, I think all of those are going to be the next big catalyst for pushing us higher. And again, Lucas, you probably know that the Bitcoin monthly returns are very positive for Q4, especially in the years where we do have elections happening. So again, zooming out, looking at last year, very positive results for Q4. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're plus 7% for September, plus 6% for October so far. You know, 
I think it's going to be a very exciting November and December. And I think these couple of events are the next big catalyst. I just love looking at this chart. Like I remember when I started investing, I was going for a 10% a year was massive for me. If I was doing 10% of my portfolio, I was like, I am going to be financially free when I'm 65. Um, what a gift we have when done well. We do take on more risk, but we get paid for that risk in terms of outsized returns. Um, this chart excites me. Even if you just bought and hold it, it is absolutely in your favor year over year. Even during the minus 31% months, mm -hmm. it's absolutely in your favor. If you look year over year returns of just holding it, if you just bought just, just like 10 grand worth of it, you are financially free and we are early, like 2.3 trillion. That's like, like that's, that's Apple has more than that. And, and this is a global thing. It's like so few people are actually, are actually involved in crypto. So few people just imagine just a 20% increase in like where the world starts using it for even just sending stable coins to each other for payment done. Like the market cap surges and we're early in that. So excited for all that. Thanks for your time, Gordon. This is super good. Yeah, for sure. I appreciate it. So let's keep an eye on the markets and a strong finish to the year. Let's go. Like, subscribe, all that fun YouTube pro stuff. Me and Colin always joke that we are now pro YouTubers, although we're really not. We're just dudes who do crypto DeFi all day long. Gordon works with fast track clients. Uh, Sean works with fast track clients. David works with fast track clients. Colin works with uh, UIG and with Accelerator members. And like we literally, me and Gordon, were talking about like we don't plan this content. We don't have to script it because this is what we do all day long. So these videos come very naturally. If you want to get involved in those conversations on a daily basis and actually have interaction, then obviously UIG, Accelerator, Fast Track, get involved with us at Crypto Labs. We'd love to have you. With that said, we'll see you in the next video.